Mules played a tremendous part in the building of roads and railways in America's early history. Barges pulled by mules walking alongside the canals built for this purpose moved the coal needed by a young and newly industrialized republic. The ability to move heavy freight along the waterways of the Northeast was an important part in the development of the country. The Chesapeake and Ohio Canal National Park in Great Falls, Maryland is maintained by the National Park Service as a monument to the canal system and the men and animals that made it work. Mules still walk the towpath today, pulling the 92-foot barges up and down a restored section of the C&O Canal. From 1833 until 1924, two mules would pull 120 tons of coal or other goods up the narrow waterway 184 miles from Cumberland to Georgetown. Enthusiasts are able to ride the barges today and the towpath is maintained for walking, jogging, bicycling, and horseback riding. Riders of mules are also welcome along the CNO Canal. The most important use of mules in the United States was in agriculture, especially in the southern states. This proved a tremendous incentive for breeding more and better mules. The plantation economy which developed in the Deep South with its emphasis on cotton and tobacco would never have been possible without an abundant supply of mules. One of the most famous and best known use of mules in American history was for the transportation of borax from the mines of Death Valley in California to the nearest railhead. Teams of 20 mules pulled approximately 28 tons on a 165 mile journey that took 10 days, then turned around immediately for the return journey. The road was almost non-existent with steep inclines, massive boulders and blowing sands. The climate ranged from well below zero at night to over 130 degrees in the day during the summer months. The mules had to be very tough and very smart. The great length of the hitch made making corners in the conventional manner impossible. So a number of the mules nearest the wagon had to learn to jump over the chain running from the front of the hitch to the front of the wagons and go outwards to prevent too sharp a turn from being made. If the hitch turned too quick, it would put the wagons and mules onto the rocks on the inside of the turn. At the Bishop Mule days, the 20 mule hitch is recreated for the spectators. The mules nearest the wagon must still jump the chain in order to make the sharp turn. The mules learn to jump the chain as soon as the jerk line mules start their turn. The jerk mules, or leaders at the front of the team, respond to a steady pull on the line for a left turn and several jerks for a right a shout, and the brakes slammed on hard for stop. It was difficult and dangerous for the mules and men alike, one of the reasons the 20 mule team became so famous. Of course, the television show didn't hurt either. In 1850, the mule population in the United States was about 600,000. In 1920, 70 years later, there were almost 6 million mules in the U.S., by far the highest number of mules in any country. By 1954, the number had dropped to only one and one-half million. Today, the mule population of the United States is about 300,000. 
The United States and most industrialized countries have long appreciated the value of mules for military purposes. Since the horse was first crossed with the donkey by the Hittites in the time before Christ, mules have packed man and his weapons to war. The prophet Muhammad rode a mule into battle, as did the generals of Alexander the Great. Alexander's own chariot was pulled by 12 great mules. And appropriately, his funeral buyer followed a magnificent four yoke hitch of 64 gold decorated mules, four abreast and four deep. From 1914 to 1918, over one quarter of a million mules were used on both sides of the trenches during World War I. 